So I'm a cloud engineer, um, and I work for I've worked for a couple different cloud tenant operators. And I think one thing people don't fully understand about the cloud is actually how it works and how it's built. So it's kind of something I want to talk about with OpenStack today. So to get started, we're actually going to talk a little bit about Azure, right? So over here, um, I've got some things going on. Um, pretty much, I ran a bash script I wrote and built a sample virtual machine, right? So, I mean, we can look at the code if we'd like to. So, ls or whoop, vim vm dash create. Pretty much what we're doing here is we are taking a JSON that is queried from Azure. We're looking for certain properties and then we're building an application out of that, right? So, um, I've got a for loop that actually doesn't look like it's properly done. Um, that's grabbing the resource group, it's selecting one for the user, and then it's going to build a sample VM um, on the free resource um, using uh, Ubuntu, putting it in West US. Pretty simple stuff here, um, but we can do some other fun stuff with that. So I was working on my start stop. So if we were to do a bash command on VM start stop, we're gonna see the VM is probably off right now if everything's correct. Uh, not quite yet, it's taken a minute. Um, we're also going to run VM deallocate. So we're going to give that a minute, um, but I'm going to keep talking about what I'm working on. So I, I do like the cloud. It's um, an interesting concept to me, and I do think there's an inherent benefit to some organizations. Like um, primarily the organization I'm at right now does a lot of activity between nine to five, and outside of those hours, it doesn't really do too much. Um, we're having some issues. Uh, that's okay. But pretty much what's cool is, you know, using uh, vim vm oh, oh. vim vm dash create. Again, what we're doing here is we're able to start and stop instances kind of on the fly like that. And this is just one way to do it. You can use bash, you can use PowerShell, you can use Azure Blueprints, um, you can use Terraform, and I'm sure there's other tools I don't even know about, right? Um, so you can do this again on anything and you know we can look status is stopped but it's actually not destroyed so it did do that part properly which is nice um, but we can entirely like delete this and again we're able to do this using a graphical interface we're able to use it using code uh, infrastructure as code whatever you really prefer um, and just to make sure we don't get charged too much we're going to delete it so that's one of the ways we can do it but the problem is, is you don't really get to see the back end and all the fun stuff that's going on, right? So you get to build and destroy things. And if you're just a cloud tenant operator working on an organization, that's plenty. You know, you don't want to get into the weeds because that's more effort, more work, and it's going to take a lot of time. Um, but kind of more as a home labber and someone who's interested in these concepts, I spent a lot of time actually working on Kala Ansible. So we can kind of get this out of the way here. Um, we can even close this one. And this is a call Ansible server. So what, what makes it a call Ansible server, right? So we're running OpenStack and call Ansible is one of the multiple ways that you can um, actually install uh, OpenStack. Um, there's a wide variety of solutions. I chose call Ansible because for me, it seemed to make the most sense. It was using you know Ansible and Docker and those are things I know how to manage and work with. So we can do a Docker PS here and you're gonna see we're running a lot of different instances, right? So I'm running uh, Wallaby as the version of OpenStack. I'm using Ubuntu binaries to do it. Um, and we've got a lot going on here. So Neutron, um, you've got OpenV switch, you've got Nova, which is gonna be your compute. You've got Cinder, which is your storage. Uh, Keystone, which is a lot of your networking. You've got some RabbitMQ for you know scheduled tasks. And I, you know, I didn't have to build this by hand. And the amazing part is then it comes into a beautiful web interface, which I can pull over here. Um, and you can see that I'm building and managing my own kind of instance. And what's really cool about this is it's very stock, um, Azure and GCP and AWS and even you know IBM and Red Hat, not Red Hat, Oracle. Um, those are all clouds I've used for different reasons, whether hackathons or work or school projects or certifications. Um, but they come with a ton of out-of-the-box tools, which is great because when you're trying to develop something and you want to get up and live, you want to go fast. But what's amazing about OpenStack is it's this free open source software that out of the gate has just about nothing for you. So 
Um, for example, if we're looking at some of our instances here, give it a moment to load, there it is. Um, so I've got a dev test instance here. Um, it's running on an IP address that I assigned to it relatively. We can get into that. It's running on the Debian 11 no cloud image, which I can talk about as well. It's got a flavor, it's got a key pair. Um, it has different availability zones. Um, and all of this has to be done by hand. So, for example, if we go into this admin tab here, we can actually really start to see how all of this is kind of coming together. So if we go to compute, got a lot of different options here. So one that took me a while was images, right? So I had to find a QCOW2 image, which you could build yourself or find on the internet. Debian actually provided this one. Um, and this is just a virtual machine image that I had to say, this is good. I want this on my network. I want OpenStack to run this. So by default, you know, you load up Azure or GCP or AWS and you say, I want a Debian instance. And it's right there, it's ready to go, and you're up and live. But this one, I had to actually pull down by hand. And I am still kind of figuring out, so I use the web GUI um, to upload it. And there it is. So for example, if you want to throw in, let's say, some kind of other image, um, I've got a MariaDB instance here. You could put that in, choose the format, you say it's a QCAL. Um, and you can start setting a bunch of different parameters for who can use this and who can't. So you set it as a shared, or you can put it private so that only certain people can view it. Um, and then you can even start inserting metadata here. So since this is a MariaDB instance, we can start putting in some database software stuff, such as go down here to MySQL is going to be close enough. Admin user, listening port, version. Then on top of that, we can start putting stuff like instruction chip set, uh, instruction sets for the chipset, such as you know x86, 64. Um, we can assign different CPU cores to this kind of thing. Um, it has a lot of different tools under the hood that you just don't get to see. So again, I'm just playing around with this software, but I really want to show it off. Um, and then it, it it gets a little bit more complicated here because once you have that, you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. I built a virtual machine before, I'll select how many cores and how many threads and how much RAM and how much storage, but it doesn't work like that. Um, so these are the, the six little instances I built. I kind of modeled them out of AWS's T2 instances, so your T2 Micro, your T2 Nano, your T2 X Large. I kind of copied those. These are running on a, a pretty small server right now, so I wasn't able to give it as much bandwidth and throughput as I really wanted to in terms of, you know, uh, processors and RAM and storage. Um, I'm, I'm running on a pretty limited setup right now, but these are now approved for use. So again, you gotta be looking at this more as like a Fortune 500 company in a lot of ways, because a lot of Fortune 500 companies are running OpenStack. Um, they can start to assign for their developers to be able to kind of check out what they want. So developers aren't allowed to go in and say, hey, I want 32 cores and 128 gigabytes of RAM. They need to find the flavor, have access to the flavor, and then deploy it. And then on top of that, it starts to get even more messy because you have to choose which hypervisor you want to run. So I'm using QMU right now, but you could of course use KVM or something else. If that's kind of more your speed. And then you start to get into volumes and you got to kind of manage um, your LVM instances. So for example, this one is coming directly out of the one active compute instance I have right now. Um, and I chose LVM because I've used LVM before and it works for me, but it has plenty of different options. Um, and then of course there's going to be cinder block storage, which you can kind of compare to um, like block storage on, you know, AWS or Azure or some other stuff as well. Um, and then outside of that, you're going to do a lot of networking. So I've got this one instance right here and we can kind of open it in a new tab. Um, let's go back into project, compute, overview, and then we're going to instances. And you're going to see, you know, I can actually click the instance, go into here. It has an IP address. I can log in. This is definitely not a good way to do it, but this is all stored locally right now and I'm going to work on it. But if I try to ping anything or even do an app update, it's going to fail because it has an IP address, but there's no routing back to my actual router right now. So I need to kind of configure that and work on that. Um, but we can go back here and we can see that, you know, we do have a network assigned to it. So I've got a test net with a subnet assigned to it. So I'm running a slash 29 subnet, you know, give me just a few few addresses to work with. Um, and that's how I got that 10.0.0. either four or five, I believe. And then on top of that, you have to kind of build your own routers and start putting in your own role-based role access controls. Um, and this is a lot of stuff that by default is built for you. 
Um, so I just really wanted to share some, kind of get some more footage and some more topics about OpenStack. It's definitely something I'm gonna be talking about a lot more as I continue to do this. Um, because this is just fascinating to me and I really don't think enough people, especially even in the cloud space, everyone I talk to about OpenStack is, oh, what's that? Or, you know, oh, I've heard of that. Um, but it, it really gives you the potential to kind of test and build your own stuff on maybe a spare laptop or a computer you have. And a big problem I have as a, um, you know, just out of college cloud engineer is for me to test a lot of these things, it costs me money. You know, I have to pay for the virtual machine, um, for the amount of hours I have it online. I have to pay for the storage that I have online where, because I'm hosting this and it's open source and there's no licenses behind it, I can build stuff and I can tear it down and I can break things. And I just kind of get that environment to myself. So if you're someone who also, you know, has a spare computer around or something like that, I will tell you call it Ansible is a pretty good way to go. If you are familiar with containerization. So if you type in, let's, let's do this, call it Ansible install. I'm using DuckDuckGo, but I'm sure it'll come up either way. Um, you can find the quick start guide here. So I'm currently using Wallaby. That's what I'd recommend. So you can kind of set your version here. Um, Xena like technically exists, um, but it's still kind of being developed. So Wallaby would be your best bet. Um, and this is a guide I would really like to do one day. It's kind of above my head to um, explain because um, I'm, I'm just not quite there. I'm able to kind of follow the guide and get everything going, but it, it does take some patience. This is a minimum like three hour job to really figure out, okay, where is that being stored? And oh, I have to download this package and I need to, okay, I need to set these variables and this environment variables a certain way. Um, but as you can see, it has pretty low requirements. You can run this on a, a just a bunch of computers in a data center. Like you could fill a data center with one OpenStack instance. Um, but personally, what I'm doing is I have a little microcomputer with uh, two network interfaces, which is plenty for me. So I threw 32 gigs of RAM in there. I've got eight cores and 16 threads, but you definitely don't need that much. Um, and you can kind of follow this guide along, um, and it's got plenty of documentation. Uh, there is going to be a few points where you'll get stuck, um, but eventually I'd like to make a guide on this. But once you get that online, again, you have access to this, and these are all different elements of OpenStack, right? So if we go back into our Ubuntu here, you're going to see if we just kind of do a, oh, there it is at the top. I was going to do a pipe and a grep. Um, Wallaby uh, Horizon. So this is actually what the web interface is. So the only thing I'm interacting with right now is one Docker container that's kind of connecting and talking to a dozen or two dozen others, right? So in the same way that I was, you know, writing bash scripts or again, blueprints or Terraform to build out um, virtual machines on the fly with code, you can do the same thing with this. Um, and it's again, something that I personally haven't done yet, but I'm going to get more into it. And I'm hopefully going to have a lot more that I can talk about and show you guys and compare um, about this kind of thing. But as a cloud engineer, I just find it so fascinating that you're able to build your own personal cloud and uh, craft it by hand, right? So I'm definitely not gonna have anything as robust or stable or um, feature rich as Azure, right? And that's not the goal, but I'm able to kind of slowly figure out, oh, if I want to you know, create a VM, I need to have not only the flavor set, but I need an image and I need a network attached to it. And for that network, I need security policies. And it's, it's not this convenient handout um, that you of course have to pay for, but it's something that you have to manually do by hand. And I'll tell you right now, it is a great way to learn the cloud. Um, if you're currently an on-prem kind of guy, um, or don't work a ton in the cloud, um, I might not start here. I'd probably want to, uh, go more with getting like an AZ 900 certification, something kind of of that level. But if you've got the time and the energy and the computing power to build, uh, an OpenStack instance. I seriously recommend it. You're gonna learn a ton along the way and then you're gonna have the ability to build and tear down and break things kind of at the will of uh, your time and effort instead of your budget. So this is just a quick overview of OpenStack. Um, I'm definitely gonna be talking about this a lot more. Hopefully you learned something and uh, I appreciate you guys for watching. So thank you.